Today I'm going to show you how to make chicken bone broth in the stock pot. This is for those of you who don't have a slow cooker and don't have an instant pot. So we're going to go old school and do it on the stovetop. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary from Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient dense foods like bone broth, ferments, sourdough and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Now you can certainly make chicken bone broth with a whole raw chicken but what I find is if you use the carcass of a roast chicken your vinyl product, your final chicken bone broth, your roast chicken bone broth has a much better flavor than if you start with a raw chicken. And what I like to do for extra added flavor and increased nutrition is to save the carcass of three roast chickens. I save them in my freezer. I just put them in a plastic container like this. I love this uh, skinny one because I can just slide it right into my freezer and I just line it with a plastic bag and it just makes it easier to take everything out. And then I'll overlay a picture so you can see, but basically all I have in here is just the carcass, scraps, you know, whatever little bits and bobs of the chicken that weren't too edible. I just, you know, at the time when you're serving a meal, and I just put everything in there. And once I have the carcass and scraps from three chickens, I get ready to make chicken bone broth. And then I also like to add my secret ingredient, chicken feet. These will make your chicken bone broth extremely gelatinous and you can actually add these to any type of bone broth you make. The taste is not going to be strong or overpower any bone broth, but it's going to make it very gelatinous. And with so many people making bone broth these days, chicken feet are becoming more common. You might find them at your grocery store or at the farmer's market, but if you can't find them there, you can also buy them online. I often buy them at U.S. Wellness Meats, the same place I buy my beef bones. And they're such sweet people and they gave me a coupon code, a discount code, for my viewers. So be sure to check the description below so that you can take advantage of that. Uh, they sell chicken feet, they sell pastured chickens, they sell beef bones, all kinds of beef, pork, uh, just a huge selection of things and everything's organic and grass-fed so you can't go wrong. So in addition to the three chicken carcass and the chicken feet, what you're going to want to have next are your aromatics and I like to use carrots, celery and onions and they don't need to be the cream of the crop you know if you've got some vegetables in your vegetable crisper that are looking a little less fantastic like some of my carrots here and I'll, I'll take some pictures and I'll overlay uh, pictures of everything so you can see how my carrots look and I'll also overlay pictures so you can see that I've got the skin on the onions you don't want to peel your onions this is very easy just rough chop everything I've just got some celery here this is about six carrots mine were very skinny and small but really there's no a specific recipe to this. This is very flexible. You can add as little or as much vegetables as you want. And the reason is the vegetables are what going to give you a lot of good minerals. So I've got six carrots, I've got well, probably a couple of stalks of celery there and I've got the leaves on and then I've got three onions and as I said nothing fancy, it's getting away from me, leave, leave the skin on the onions. And the next thing you're going to want is about a tablespoon of black peppercorns and a couple of bay leaves. You know me, I always, if you've seen some of my other bone broth videos, I love adding bay leaves in. And then what I've got over here is a cup of white vermouth. Now, you want to add some type of acid to your bone broth because that's going to help leach out uh, the collagen that's in the bones and that's what's going to help to make your bone broth gelatinous and collagen is a protein and so bone broth is very protein rich and that collagen is supposed to be very good for our skin, our hair, our nails, uh, supposed to apparently heal our guts and do all kinds of things. Uh, so we want to make sure that we extract as much collagen out of those bones as possible. I like to use white vermouth. Now you can also use white wine, but if you don't want to use alcohol, that's no problem. Uh, you can use a little vinegar. But if you use vinegar, I recommend apple cider vinegar because that has a nice flavor to it. And then even so, even though it does have a nice flavor, I like to only go with a quarter of a cup because vinegar is strong. And if you put a whole cup in, it may not evaporate in the time that you're making your bone broth and it may leave a little bit of a sharp flavor. So if you'd go with the vinegar, just use a quarter of a cup. That's more than enough to leach out 
the collagen from the bones. And the final thing you're going to need is just some water. And we want to have just enough water to cover. That's a question that I get a lot. It's like, oh no, my bone broth was very watery. And that's often because you've added too much water. Once we get everything into our stock pot, and this is a 10 quart stock pot that I'm using today, once you get everything into your stock pot, you want to just cover with enough water, literally by no more than an inch. And speaking of a 10 quart stock pot, if you have a smaller stock pot, that's no problem. And if you want to make this with just one chicken carcass, you can do that too. And if you have a smaller stock pot and just one chicken carcass, that will work out very well. And if you maybe you have a six quart stock pot, and if you have an eight quart stock pot, maybe you can get in two chicken carcass and your vegetables, and that'll work out well. This is very adjustable. There's really no exact recipe. It's not an exact science. The bottom line is that no matter how much you put into your stock pot, no matter how large it is or how small it is, you want to make sure that all you do is add enough water to cover the ingredients. And when I get everything into my stock pot, I'll take a picture and I'll overlay that so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But just enough water to cover. Even if a few things are sticking out a little bit, that's fine. You want to make sure, you'd rather err on not enough water than too much water. So no more than an inch above and if a few things are sticking out, that's perfect. Well, these are all my three chicken carcass and scraps and so on and so forth. Some chicken fat that's in there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put this right down into my stock pot. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my chicken feet. And I've got six chicken feet since I have the carcass of three chickens. Now, if you don't have chicken feet though, don't worry. You can still make chicken bone broth without them. Now I'm going to take my white vermouth and I'm just going to pour that over all of that chicken. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in my two bay leaves and my black peppercorns. Now I'm going to go ahead and just put my vegetables on top. Well, this is nice and filled and I just want to mention again, no peeling because the onion skins, just like the carrot skins, contain wonderful nutrition. They're very nutrient rich, so there's no reason to peel them. And speaking of peeling, if you are cooking something where you're peeling carrots or you're setting aside the leafy greens from the celery or you're uh, chopping up onions and you're removing the skin, don't throw any of that out. Put it in another container in a plastic bag like this or a plastic container like this. Put it in your freezer and then save that to use to add to your bone broths, whether you're making chicken bone broth or fish bone broth or beef bone broth, whatever the case may be. Save all your scraps and you can also save lettuces. They make wonderful additions to bone broths and they're very nutritious. The only vegetables that you do want to avoid are like your cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower uh, for multiple reasons. One is they can impart kind of an odd flavor into bone broths for after simmering for so long. And secondly, they contain goitrogens, which can be a little hard on the thyroid. And if you're gonna be drinking bone broth every day, you don't wanna be drinking something that can be a little hard on the thyroid. Generally, when you cook broccoli and cauliflower and things like that, it does lessen those goitrogens and you're discarding the liquid. So it's okay to eat them when they're cooked, but best not to uh, have them simmering in a bone broth for a long time and putting all those goitrogens into the broth. And I want to mention something about garlic. A number of people uh, have left me questions on my other bone broth videos and sent me emails about this. Why don't I add garlic to any of my bone broths? And the reason is, again, it's flavor. When garlic has simmered a very long time, like in a bone broth, I find it takes on an off-putting flavor. So if I'm going to use my bone broth, uh, at a, for a recipe at some point, I want to make sure that it's pretty simple and doesn't have a strong flavor, whether I'm going to be drinking it as a beverage or using it a, in, another, in another way. And garlic can put in not just a strong flavor, not just the garlic flavor, but after simmering for so long, it can be a little off-putting in its flavor. So I recommend adding garlic after the fact if you want to add garlic to your bone broth once it's a finished product. 
And I also don't add in any salt. Now, when I make chicken bone broth and, and I'm using the carcass from roast chickens, you know, they had salt when I roasted them, uh, but I don't add any additional salt. And I also don't add salt like when I make bone broth or uh, beef bone broth or fish broth, fish bone broth, uh, because again, depending on what I'm gonna be using it for, I like to make sure that my bone broth is as, a, is as salt free as possible. But when I go to warm it and drink it, Always adding a little sea salt helps bring all the flavors together because I know some of you have shared with me that you find bone broth very bland. But if you just put a little bit of sea salt in it, I think you're gonna find that it's got a lovely flavor to it. And also the sea salt adds extra nutrients. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just start, start adding water into here. We'll see how much we, we need. We're gonna have to go to the rim of the bot since it's quite full. But again, you know, just enough to cover. Well, I've got this filled with my water and I took a picture and I'm gonna overlay it so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. That now granted my, my stock pot here is pretty full, but even if it were lower, I still would fill it with this exact um, level of water in terms of how much was in here. Things would be sticking out a little on top. And as I said, you can go as much as you can go as much as an inch over, but it's really not necessary. If you have a few things sticking out, that's fine because as this cooks, this is all going to cook down and it'll become submerged pretty quickly. So, as I said, error on putting less water than too much water. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my stove top. I'm gonna to bring it up to a boil, but the minute it comes up to a boil, I'm gonna turn it down to low. And if you have an electric cooktop, you're gonna to wanna to move it to another burner until the burner that it was on uh, cools down because you do not want to boil this. Boiling uh, bone broth is, is the enemy of bone broth. It, for lack of a better word, it breaks the gelatin. And so you do not want to boil the bone broth. And some of you may have seen the video where I made bone broth in an Instant Pot. And an Instant Pot keeps bone broth at a higher temperature than uh, what is best for making a nice gelatinous bone broth. But the gelatin can withstand some of that pressure and some of that higher heat for a shorter period of time. And since you only make the bone broth in an Instant Pot for about two hours, it's able to withstand some of that. But if you see in that video, my final product, although gelatinous, is more of a loose gelatin than a really strong gelatin, like what I get when I make it on the stovetop or in a slow cooker. And I'll also link to that video uh, where I make chicken bone broth in the slow cooker. Uh, if you do have that and can, can use that to make bone broth, that's a wonderful way to make bone broth. So as I was saying, I'm just gonna bring this up to a boil and then immediately turn it down to low. And if any uh, scum or foam you may see that comes to the top, we're just gonna scoop that off and then we're gonna set our burner to its lowest setting. And what we're gonna be looking for is where you just see the occasional bubbles. As I've shared with you in the past in some of my other bone broth videos, basically what you're looking for is bloop, bloop, like that. Just occasional bubbles coming up. And if you have a food thermometer, what you're looking for in terms of temperature is 180 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the perfect temperature at which to simmer bone broth to guarantee you get a really nice gelatinous bone broth. But if you don't have a food thermometer, don't worry. There is some variation in terms of the temperature and what will finally create a nice gelatinous bone broth. But basically what you're looking for is a very low simmer where you just get an occasional bubble. Bloop, 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 like that. <laughs> Alrighty, well let me go ahead and put this on my stovetop. I'll bring it up to a boil and we'll skim off any foam that comes to the top. Well, I had this on my stovetop. I brought it up to a boil and the minute it came up to a boil, I turned it down to low and all of the foam, what it's called scum, rose to the top. It's just little impurities and whatnot that cook off uh, from, the, from the bones. And I skimmed that off and I'm gonna put a picture and or I think maybe I made a little video uh, and I'm gonna show you what it looked like 
when the foam, the scum, rose to the top and then how I just started to skim it off with a spoon. It's very easy to do, it's very easy to do, and what's nice about removing all of that scum is that it makes the final product appear more clarified, a clearer, uh, nicer, finished bone broth in the end. And once I skimmed off all that foam, I let this simmer for six hours. Because with chicken bone broth, six hours is sufficient to extract all of the nutrients from the bones. And especially since this was a roast chicken that had already been cooked, or the carcasses from a roast chicken that had already been cooked, the six hours is the perfect time to make a very nutritious and gelatinous bone broth. Now what I'm gonna do is start removing all of the solids from this bone broth. And after simmering all of this for six hours, I believe that pretty much all of the nutrients from the carcasses and from the vegetables have been extracted. However, the feet, especially since I put those in raw, they have not completely disintegrated yet. And there's still a lot of gelatin, and, uh, or not gelatin, cartilage, which is very rich in, in uh, collagen, which makes the bone broth gelatinous. And I believe that a lot of the cartilage has not yet uh, dissolved. So I'm gonna save these, and I can put them in my fridge for a day uh, if I'm gonna make another batch of chicken bone broth tomorrow with other carcasses that I have in the freezer, or I can just remove all these feet and wrap them up and freeze them and save them for another time when I may be making chicken bone broth. Yeah, so there's definitely, there's definitely cartilage here that hasn't dissolved yet. And definitely, I think there's a lot of benefit. You'll see there's even cartilage here on the chicken foot bone. And so there's still nutrition collagen that can be extracted from these. So I'm gonna save the feet. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and continue straining out all of these solids, and then we'll get ready to strain our broth and decant it. Well, I strained out all the solids of the bone broth, and at this point, you've got a couple of options. You can go ahead and put this in your refrigerator as is, and in the morning, all of the fat will have risen to the top. It's the chicken fat, the schmaltz, and you can just cut that off or scoop it off. If it's real thick, you can just cut it with a knife, score it, and remove it. Don't throw it out. It's a wonderful fat, and it's wonderful for sauteing potatoes and various other vegetables, and it's very tasty, and it's a must when making chopped chicken livers. So as I said, the fat will rise to the top and become solid, and you can remove that, and then you'll have your nice gelatinous chicken bone broth underneath. And any little bits of debris that have been left over in here that we weren't able to get out when we scooped everything out of here uh, will have sunk to the bottom. And so you can scoop out all of your bone broth, and you can decant it into a separate vessel, and then just discard those little bits of debris on the bottom. But those of you who may have seen my other bone broth videos, of, of which I have quite a few now, oh, that's my ice maker, uh, what I like to do is take a flour sack towel and put it over a strainer and then on top of some type of vessel, I'm using a glass measuring cup here so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. But I like to just take this strainer and then line it with the flour sack towel and then I like to take my bone broth and just strain it again through, we strained out the solids, now we're gonna strain it through the flour sack towel, and you can certainly use cheesecloth if you want. I like these because they're reusable. And then I'm just gonna strain as much broth as I can, and then I'll show you why I do this. Because what I like to do, I like to catch as much of the debris as possible to make a really nice, clear bone broth, and also to maximize every little bit of ounce of beef broth, of beef broth, the chicken bone broth that I can get from this batch. Because if you let all of the, the debris uh, sink to the bottom, there will still be a little bone broth, you know, mixed in with them. And I, I'm very frugal, and I like to make sure that I get every little last bit 
of my bone broth. So that's why I like to take this step. And I'll show you as I strain this, everything that I'm collecting on this flower sack towel. So you'll see why I do this. And I'll show you, see, this is all the debris that I collect, and that's just from the first couple of scoops. And I'll take a picture so you can see it up close. But there's a lot of debris that is going to come out of this, all little bits and bobs, so to speak, that I can't scoop out when I'm removing all of the solids. And so I really like this. I, I really like doing it this way. And I have to say, I've mentioned before, you know, I'm very frugal. And so I like to make sure that I get every bit of bone broth possible, in this case, chicken bone broth, out of every batch that I make. And the nice thing about chicken bone broth, if you've been hesitant to make bone broth because you may be worried about the cost of the bones, the beef bones, or whatever the case may be, chicken bone broth, you're literally making this for pennies a batch because you're using a carcass that may have otherwise been thrown out, a chicken carcass and some scraps, some skin, whatever you have left over after roasting a chicken and, and having you, know, you and your family or friends enjoy eating it. And you save three of those carcass and you're basically making this for pennies. And even if you add the chicken feet, uh, I've seen chicken feet at my grocery store. Now granted, they're not you know, organic or grass-fed or pastured, but nonetheless, uh, I've seen chicken feet for as low as $2 for a big package. So really, this is a very reasonable way to make bone broth, and it's a great place to get started if you're new to making bone broth. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue straining this through, through the flour sack towel, and then I'll show you the next step I make, because at this point, you've got some options too, and we'll go over those. Well, this measuring cup is getting full, so I wanna show you how to go about decanting this. At this point, you can just go ahead and pour this right into your jar, whatever vessel you're gonna to use to store it in. I like to store it in these half gallon um, mason jars if I'm planning on using it right away. Otherwise, I like to store it in these two cup or one cup type jars. I think they're called French working glasses or French jelly jars, something like that. And the reason I like these is they're very thick and then I'll put these into the freezer. And I don't worry about them breaking because I leave a pretty good amount of head space. Plus, in the event that I didn't and the bone broth expanded when it froze, these just pop right off. So that's a nice, nice feature about them. And then these are great for when I wanna make a recipe because I replay whenever any recipe I have that would call for water, uh, you know, in a, in a savory type dish, I will use bone broth. And I especially like chicken bone broth for making rice and grains and mashed potatoes and things like that. It's wonderful. And so storing it in these amounts in my freezer, I can just take it out whenever I'm, and let it defrost whenever I'm ready uh, to make one of those type dishes. Now, if you're gonna put it in a large size like this and you think that you may not drink it right away, say you decide that, well, I'm gonna drink the bone broth or I might even need to use this much because I'm gonna make a soup, but I don't know exactly when I'm gonna make the soup. I'm gonna make it this week. You know, I'd have it in your meal plan, um, but I'm not gonna make it tomorrow, next day or day after. Bone broth, I think, stays fresh in the fridge. I know some people say three to four days. I really think two to three days, uh, maybe four days, but uh, whenever I put it in this size container, we usually drink it within two to three days. Uh, but if you think that you'd like it to last a week or maybe even two weeks in your refrigerator, then you can just go ahead and pour this in with the fat. And there's a line of fat here. I'll take a picture so you can see it but the schmaltz is right on top here. And what'll happen is you'll pour this bone broth in here, the fat will rise to the top, and then that'll make somewhat, I, I don't wanna say exactly 100% perfect air, airtight seal, but I think it makes a fairly good airtight seal to help preserve the bone broth while it's in the refrigerator. And I think it keeps it fresh for a week or a little longer. Some folks have said that when they do this method that uh, it's, they, they've tested it after two weeks and it's still fresh. So that's good to know. So I'll overlay a picture, as I said, of, of the fat line you can see here. So that's, at this point, that's what you can do. You can just go ahead and pour this right in, refrigerate it, let the fat rise to the top and harden, and you've got a nice airtight seal for a nice half gallon 
of chicken bone broth ready for whenever you want to use it in the next week or two. But I'm going to be using this half gallon of chicken bone broth in the next day, as tom tomorrow as a matter of fact, because I'm going to be making a lot of grains. I'm going to be cooking a lot of grains and I want to cook them all in chicken bone broth to increase their nutritional value. So what I like to do is use a fat separator. And for those of you who may have seen my other bone broth videos, you know I love this fat separator. Basically, you pour your bone broth in here. There's a little lever here and it opens up this little spout on the bottom and then you just let your bone broth go down into your jar, your vessel, whatever you're storing it in and when you see the fat line getting to the bottom you just release the lever and you decant the, the fat into something else, a different type of vessel to store it, to use. So I love this gadget and I'll, uh, I know a lot of you have asked me where I got this and I'll put a link uh, to it below, in the description below where you can find one and just go ahead and I'm just going to do this and then I'll show, ooh, I'm spilling a little. Well, let's just let that fat rise to the top. You'll see it's got a pretty good fat line and then we just decant the bone broth. How great is that? Well, as I was decanting all of this chicken bone broth, I put a little bit in the fridge so we could see the level of gelatinousness <laughs> that this broth came. Look at that gloriousness. I'll take a close-up picture so that you can see it. So this just came glorious. This is so nutritious, so good for us. And oh, the aroma is just delightful, so chickeny. And look at this. Look at how much we have that we were able to make and how many meals this is going to make from a carcass of a chicken, in the case of this three carcass, that may have otherwise been thrown out. I mean, this is really a no waste kitchen. I love this because I've got a gallon or a half a gallon here. And then these are each two cup measures. So that's another eight cups. And then these are one cup measures. All of this chicken bone broth. I can use this for making grains, for making rice, for making uh, soups, uh, and for drinking and enjoying. And it's going to add so much flavor and so much nutrition that I otherwise wouldn't have had. And not only do I have all this magnificent chicken bone broth, I've got this big one cup size of schmaltz, the chicken fat. I mean, no waste. This would have been things that would have all been thrown out those carcass, but instead we've got bone broth and a good supply of chicken fat to cook with. So I really hope you'll give making roast chicken bone broth a try. You know, even if you just start with one chicken carcass, but look at this glorious color. It's just wonderful. And if you'd like to learn more about traditional foods cooking, be sure to subscribe to my channel and then click on this video over here where I have a playlist of bone broth videos where I show you how to make beef bone broth, chicken bone broth in the slow cooker, in the instant pot, all different ways. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.